There. Lovely to see you, sir. N nice to see you, too. This is very dramatic day. It's Freedom Day, isn't it? More. <laughs> <laughs> We're awaiting, of course, the FISA memo. We're dramatically back here in Washington, D.C. Now, before we begin, I want people to remember that uh, learning about the things that you're up to, the uh, ongoing fight for, for uh, just sign the petition to get you to be the special counsel, they can go to freedomwatchusa.org, and of course they can follow you on Twitter. Uh, I've got your Twitter Twitter here. It's Larry E. Clayman on Twitter. And the time you and I spoke, you had just filed a complaint in the Bundy matter for a, uh, a judgment about the ownership, a declaratory judgment about the ownership of the That's land. That's right. And I know that the uh, wheels of justice turn very slowly, but has anything happened since we last spoke with that matter? We're in the process of serving the complaint right now, and it will move relatively quickly. This isn't a legal argument. It's not going to be heavily factual. So this case should move relatively quickly. We're also <clears throat> looking at filing a malicious prosecution and civil rights complaint for all that went on with regard to the Bureau of Land Management, the FBI, mm -hmm. the prosecutors. And we have pending, as you know, Jason, Office of Professional Responsibility and Inspector General complaints, the same Inspector General that has been looking at what Andrew McCabe did and others did at the FBI with regard to Trump, uh -huh. is they should be investigating this matter as well. I was assured by a Justice Department lawyer just a few weeks ago that they are conducting an investigation. Of course, we have to keep their feet to the fire because when they say those things, you never regrettably, know. the government can, cannot be believed. <laughs> and do you have any personal mm -hmm. experience with Michael Horowitz? I don't, but he's got a tremendous budget. His budget is $200 million a year, if you can believe that. Wow. So if he just applies some of it to the Bundy case, uh, we should get some results. And I've offered to meet with uh, the Inspector General. Next week, I'm going to be meeting with people on the Judiciary Committee of the House of Representatives about what happened with Bundy as well, because the judge involved in this case, Navarro, she should be looked at. Her conduct was out of control. It was outrageous. The only reason that uh, Bundy was <clears throat> let free, in effect, was because it was so egregious, the prosecutorial misconduct and the misconduct by the BLM and the FBI, that her own reputation was going down the drain along with them. Yeah. So it was basically like jumping ship. It wasn't out of the goodness of her heart. I can assure you of that. But I'm pleased that the independent journalism movement was, I think, mm -hmm. able to have a major role in that. You know, John Lamb and Brant Thornton and uh, there's a bunch of people who were traveling around with, I apologize to those whose names I'm not recalling right now, but many, many people followed the trial around, followed the Bundys around, went to the, was mm. it the Perump Detention Center they were at? That's correct. Every time I would go out to see Cliven, they were camped out there. And there was just tremendous support at the grassroots, tremendous support from patriots around the country. Mm. People realized, as I've said before, that this was little mini second American revolution. Yeah. And that's what drew me to Cliven Bundy and his family is that I saw this was the first time in modern history that anyone using their Second Amendment and First Amendment rights, and the Bundys weren't even armed by the way, it was just the protesters. I'm glad that you're reiterating were, were, that. We're able point. to stand down the government, an oppressive government that is out of control. Because that's exactly why our founding fathers gave us the Second Amendment. It wasn't with regard to firearms to use against each other. It was with regard to an oppressive government run by King George III. And as Not you also for know turkeys either. Yeah, right. <laughs> as you also know that Thomas Jefferson said that we were going to have to use those rights every other generation, that there would probably be a revolution. And while I don't advocate violence or bloodshed, right. Jefferson, who was pretty much of a heavyweight, I would say, to put it mildly, said that it was actually going to come to that from time to time. He actually predicted that. And I don't uh, advocate that, but, and I hope we never see that, but he thought that would happen. And that's why that Second Amendment was put in there. They thought that you would ultimately have to use firearms against the government at some point because it would be taken over by corrupt individuals that were trying to snuff out the rights of the citizenry, other individuals. And that seems like a point that's so frequently avoided. You know, we always hear about 
how you don't need a semi-automatic gun to hunt or anything like that. And that's not what it's about. It's about, you know, people, people have lost sight of the fact that it's a government by the people, for the people, of the people, not a government of elites that's right. ruling the people. Now, as, as a practical matter today, I mean, let's get a little philosophical here, and it'll, it's a segue to the issue of the memo that's going to be coming out today yes. with regard to the abuse by the FBI of the Trump administration and Fusion GPS and everything else. Mm -hmm. But the Founding Fathers put into the Second Amendment not just the right to bear arms, but the right to commission militias. Militias are not a dirty word as long as you obey the law. But if the government disobeys the law and comes after you, as occurred with the BLM and the FBI and the Bundy matter, mm -hmm. and again, the Bundys never picked up a weapon, mm -hmm. but the protesters came, some of them, and they were armed because they didn't want to be beaten up and assaulted and killed as they thought was going to be happening to the Bundys. Right. So, and that's the reason for the Second Amendment. That's the reason for militias. Ryan Payne, who was a, a co-defendant along with Clive and his son Ammon, his son Ryan, um, he uh, formed a militia when he came back from Afghanistan. He saw government abuse in Afghanistan. And he said, I'm going to come to the defense of citizens who are being treated in an oppressive way with excessive force. But he never, ever advocated uh, violating the law or committing a crime. It was all defensive. So that's really important. But in today's world, Jason, is that you couldn't wage an armed revolution against the government unless the government itself defects, unless the military goes right. against the state. Because actually, we're so overpowered. Yeah, right? there was actually some discussion of that by some people, retired generals during the Obama administration. <laughs> <laughs> they actually thought about going to the White House and getting him right at some point. Well, but it never happened. That would be uh, ugly. And I don't advocate it. No. But, but you couldn't do it because of the power of the NSA and the FBI and the CIA, the intelligence agencies. Mm -hmm. And the line that I used to use and still use is that if King George III had had a national security agency with those surveillance powers, the founding fathers would have never made it to Philadelphia yeah. to sign the Declaration of Independence. They would have been picked up, arrested, and executed before they got there. And, and that's the power of the government today. It's all powerful. It's true. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to transition a little bit to some of this stuff with the FBI and the FISA memo and the FISA court. Uh, I don't know if you visit True Pundit, Larry, but it's just, it's been exploding with information about uh, what's going on with Andrew McCabe. They're saying that um, he's lawyering up as the FISA memo drop looms. What can you say about all of the uh, various machinations that we've seen here in D.C. for the past few days. We've seen Adam Schiff, we've seen Chuck Schumer, Nancy yeah. Pelosi. They're basically mm -hmm. losing their minds over this. What do you think we're going to see? Uh, wait a minute, memo declassified. I just got an alert on the uh, on the iPad here, so we'll take a look we'll at see that. See if it was released. The Congress has to release it, that but was, uh, you know this is typical of Washington. Look. <clears throat> Here we are looking over Washington today. Got a nice view. Uh, you look down there, it looks like a beautiful city. It's pristine. It's one of the most beautiful cities on earth, particularly mm. in the springtime and in the fall. It's a nice day today. It's a nice day today. But it's, it's corrupt. It's corrupt. And I get a sinking feeling when I come back to Washington. I used to live here full time. I lived here 25 years. Mm. Now I come back here a lot. And it's kind of like there's, there's a feeling of evil frankly, in Washington, D.C. that just hovers over it. Mm. Because you do have the Nancy Pelosi's, you do have the Adam Schiff's, uh, you have others out there who have no sense of ethics, morality, or any respect for the rule of law or the Constitution. They're yeah. an absolute disgrace. And I'll be blunt, and I'll be passionate here. The left in this country is so out of control. It has become like the Bolsheviks in 1917. They want to destroy this country by and large. There are some good people on the left, but the great majority, frankly, are not good people. Why do they want that, Larry? What would they gain from destroying the United States? Well, first they want to take it down to ground zero. It reminds me a little bit like Atlas Shrugged, but in reverse. And then they want to build it back up in their image. They don't want the Founding Fathers' image. They want total government control. They do not generally 
worship God. A lot of them are atheists. A lot of them are agnostics. They believe that government is God, just like in the Soviet Union. It could not be religious. It was the government or in China or right. places like that. That's who they are. Hmm. And look at Bernie Sanders, the complete fraud that he is. Someone who went to Moscow on his honeymoon because that was his nirvana. Is that right? With his wife, yeah. Oh, wow. And so for the, for the Democrats and for the left to be all exercised over Trump's communications with Russian ambassadors through Sessions or whoever is so hypocritical because you see that is their promised land. Soviet Union and Russia, they admired it, okay? They wanted this country to be, and they still want this country to be like the old Soviet Union, a lot of them. Right. So this is a total sham. The country has gone down the drain. And then you've got the Republican side, the establishment, and they're trying to hang on. They're propping, trying to prop Trump up a little bit right now because they realize if they don't, they're going to lose the midterm elections in 2018. Yeah. But you have people like Paul Ryan, who are two-faced, play, play both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, he says, well, now Schiff's memo should come out. Why, why send that piece of garbage out? Throw it in the trash. You know, people want to, to see the underlying documents, uh, release those documents. But Adam Schiff doesn't have a, a shred of honesty. You know, he should go back to representing the people in West Hollywood, which are, you know, his soul brothers. <laughs> Well, that, that's talk, where he comes from. I know, that's his district. Let's talk about Adam Schiff and for a moment. And that's not to disparage gay people, believe it or not. Most gay people are a whole lot better than Adam Schiff. Is Adam Schiff gay? I don't know. I don't okay. care. I think he's, I met him on the train. He's got a son. He was with his son. Well, uh, look, I'm not a homophobe. And, yeah, and, that's and I, and I, I don't want to get into it, but I'll tell you something. About a third of Capitol Hill is gay, and, and they have wives to pretend that they're not because they're not honest people. At least if you're gay, you should be proud of it and come out of the closet. Right. So let's talk about Adam Schiff for a moment. I did meet him on, boy, I hope we're live here. Limbo buffering, people are saying. Uh, Larry, I'm sorry. You know, it's always, a, it's always a thing when we have these remote broadcasts. It said it had a strong signal, but it appears like we might uh, be posting yeah, this Yeah, that's Washington because you have all these microwaves here. They just knock out the, yeah. the communications. Yeah, it's always tricky from these hotel settings. But back to Adam Schiff, you know, I encountered him on a train, and yeah, people say buffering without sound in Germany. Well, I want to continue, because it's recording here on the iPad, and at very least sure. we can upload it after. Met Adam Schiff on a train, and I approached him. I said, you know, did anybody ever tell you you look a lot like Adam Schiff? And he said, I am Adam Schiff. And I said, what the hell are you doing? Where's the evidence in this Russia hack thing? And I mean, the look on his face, he got so angry. And he looked at me like, I've seen this look only a few times. I saw it on the, in the look in the eyes of the coroner in Las Vegas when I was asking him with Laura Loomer about had they autopsied all 58 bodies. And it's just the look of somebody who knows that you're onto him and doesn't like it. <laughs> Well, I have to say, you know, Nancy Pelosi at this point is senile, in my opinion. I agree with she's that. She's senile. I mean, she's had too many facelifts, and maybe <laughs> it went to her brain, okay? But, <laughs> but Adam Schiff, and I wouldn't do this, and I'm advocated, but you listen to the guy, you feel like punching him in the face because he's so dishonest. He is so sleazy that it's just disgusting. It's just like the slime rolls off him. And you just can't, you know, do that kind of thing with the American people for long without being held accountable in terms of of uh, you know, your political standing. He has no political standing anymore. It does seem like they are very desperately trying to come up with any kind of method to delay this release. I'm, I'm trying to see if we can learn anything about it. It looked like Fox just sent an alert saying that it was released, but now their headline says, Media Misses the Memo, Time Honored Quest for Truth, Transparency, honored in film, but not in real life. So I don't know yeah. if that means the memo's been released or not. It looks like not yet. But um, w were any of the things that they were proposing to do to delay the release at all legally valid? No, they're not legally valid because the American people have a right to know. Look, 99% of the time when the government says something is classified and is going to violate sources and methods, it's, right. it's BS. I mean, we know that. Which is I, a we've lived that line. in Washington. The standard line, <clears throat> and they just don't want it out. Now they want their names out of it. They want Rosenstein's name out of it. They want McCabe's name out of it. 
they want Strzok, they want Page, they want all their names out of it, okay? Because it's a giant cabal here. You know, yeah. if we're going into the Super Bowl tomorrow. I'm sorry I'm using the word look so much. I don't want to sound like Karl Rove. It's okay. <laughs> but maybe I should have a little uh, easel here, you know? <laughs> Although, I'm, in any event, my family was in the pork business. Uh, Carl does remind me a little bit like Porky Pig. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Karl Rove epitomizes this town. So does James Carville, okay? It's the Super Bowl's tomorrow. I'm rooting for Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia. But it's the National League and the American Conference and the um, the NFL Conference, okay, the, and they're all part of the same league, okay, right. generally speaking, and Trump has broken that up, and they fear him, and I love the fact that he'll take on the judges, that he'll talk about their biases and prejudices, that he will challenge them. I love the fact that he's challenging the FBI and the CIA and the NSA yeah. and the Director of National Intelligence. These agencies have taken over the country. They are more powerful than the president, him or herself. Hmm. And we have an unaccountable government here that needs to be, frankly, dismantled. And that's why this memo needs to come out. Hopefully this will be the beginning of doing that. But the American people are going to need to rise up because it's not going to happen among this both Democrat and Republican deep state. And it's the two of them that conspire. Look, you see all the cranes out there? Yeah. That are all the buildings. This this city has never had a recession. It continues to, to grow and grow and grow. More federal employees on top of more federal employees. Most of them sit around eating donuts and, and reading the newspaper. <laughs> I used to joke because I would come into work from Virginia. I lived in Virginia towards the end of my time, full time here. Uh -huh. And I would see these people on the roads and, uh, you know, 10 o'clock, I mean, coming in late or walking down the streets that look like you know, the walking dead, it looked like zombies. I mean, it's, this is Washington, D.C., and it's why people are disgusted with it. And Adam Schiff, to get back to that, yeah. and the Nancy Pelosi's are the poster men and women of what a complete sham this city has become. Larry, there was a, um, a helicopter accident just the other day in Newport Beach, California, where some employees of the Standard Hotel were killed. And QAnon, I don't know if that's something that you followed at all, but uh, QAnon was posting some things linking the Standard Hotel to Adam Schiff. Do you know anything about this? I don't. Maybe something to look into. Something to look into, yeah. I, I don't know that there is any direct link. I mean, a lot of people share these QAnon posts with me, and I just, yeah. you know, it's almost like going to a... Uh, uh, a psychic where they well, make these broad... it's worth investigating for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've been trying to investigate Schumer and we filed FOIA requests because I believe that Schumer has had closer relations with Russia than even Trump. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it's Stonewall because they, they protect their benefactors. And 90% of the people or more in the government are pro-Clinton, pro-Obama, pro-Democrat. Nothing ever changes. As the French say, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Right. And so, I mean, that's basically what this whole release the memo thing is about. Devin Nunez, he was the guy, you know, way back in the day. We heard uh, rumblings about yeah. this memo for months, and now they're attacking Nunez. They want to remove him. They're just pulling out all the stops. Well, I'm glad what Nunez is doing, and I applaud it. But I've got to tell you my experience with Nunez mm -hmm. and, and the other one over at the Senate Intelligence Committee, Burr, you mm -hmm. know, the senator from North Carolina. Because the issue is a lot broader than unmasking uh, information about Trump, his family, and his associates under Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which has been done illegally. Mm -hmm. The issue is also this mass surveillance of the American people, which I enjoined twice in court here, in federal court. And I went to them when this issue first broke, and I said, you've got to talk to our client, Dennis Montgomery, who was an NSA, CIA, FBI contractor left with 600 million pages of information, some of it classified. Mm. Uh, I took him to Comey at the FBI through a federal judge here, Royce Lambert. Uh -huh. And they were supposed to be investigating. He turned all of his stuff over. He testified under oath for three hours. It's video that the FBI has it. And Comey, it now appears, what he was doing, he was taking this information about 
uh, illegalities and unconstitutional actions and mass surveillance by the FBI and the intelligence agencies off the market. He lured us in. Wow. And I got uh, immunity for, for Dennis Montgomery to do that. So I went to Nunes and I said, you got to look at this too. It's part of a broader picture. And he turned a deaf ear and so did Burr on the other. Why? Committee. Well, because I believe that they're so frightened if, if they go too far that all the dirt about them is going to start flying out of files. Okay, uh -huh. Boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands and wives, hmm. paramours, uh, financial transactions, just like they've done with Trump. So they're only going so far. This is a pinprick of the problem about mass surveillance by these intelligence agencies and the FBI. They're taking an interest because it threatens their political future. If you bring Trump down, they're fearful they can go down with him in terms of their standing and their reelection. But when it's all of the American people, and they've just now reauthorized Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act without any modification. But what does that mean, Section 702? I think a lot of people hear these things and don't necessarily know. That's the, uh, the law which allows the government to, without any probable cause, intercept any communication overseas outside of this country. So anytime you call your friends in Israel and France or Italy or Japan or whatever, the government has intercepted that communication. And what happened with Trump is that they unmasked it and the people around him, they unmasked it, which is that they actually, having collected it, now wanted to listen to the phone calls, look at the emails without probable cause. There and was, by unmasking, you mean identify the participants in those communications. So that's a much right. clearer right. picture of what's being discussed and by who. Right. Now, despite the abuse that we've now seen, which is rampant, you're going to see it in the memo, the intelligence community convinced even President Trump to rubber stamp the old law. Yeah. And it's been reenacted. Congress reenacted it. And the president, I don't blame him that much because he's got so much on his mind and this was probably put in front of him, and he said, okay, you know, they sold it as an anti-terrorism thing. Well, you know, it may be good for anti-terrorism, but have probable cause before you unmask American citizen. Right. And then you've got what was Section 215 of the Patriot Act, which was then reenacted as the USA Freedom Act, mm. and that resulted after I got these injunctions ordering the NSA and the other intelligence agencies to stop doing this mass surveillance without probable cause in mm -hmm. violation of the Fourth Amendment. They're, they continue to, to collect this mass surveillance on the American people. Mm -hmm. And as we saw with an Inspector General's report a number of years ago, the employees of the NSA were even, even eavesdropping on their girlfriends, boyfriends, yeah. husbands, and wives to see if they were cheating on them. You could, anybody could access it. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So ask yourself this question. Why did uh, Chief Justice Roberts flip at the last minute and, and rubber stamp Obamacare. Did they have something on him? Did the Obama administration, through these intelligence agencies, blackmail him into that decision, which frankly has gone a long way to destroying our economy? Hmm. And, and Dennis Montgomery came forward with information to the FBI saying that they were doing surveillance on the Chief Justice and on other justices Just and 156 judges. So why hasn't Nunes looked at that? And so this is a good start. I hope maybe he's seen the light, right. but I doubt that they're going to because that doesn't really affect them, they don't think. Right. The Trump thing can bring down Republican control of Congress. So you know, now they're paying attention to that. Do you feel like there was any involvement with uh, Trump and the Russians and you know, hacking the election or manipulating the results of the election. We've seen no evidence of that. We've seen any My gut feeling is, look, we try to do the same thing. It's not a relative situation, but we intervene in the Russian election. We intervene in the French election. But how? Though? We intervene I mean, in Brexit. Putting well, ads on Facebook is one thing. Well, we do that through the CIA. We do that you know, with adverse countries, with uh, economic information where we try to screw up their economy. I mean, we do all that stuff, okay? I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I mean, if they're our foe, okay, <laughs> let's do it. But when someone else does it to us, shame on us that we allow it to happen, that we allow the hacking, that we don't have cyber security, But it just feels like a made-up story. Right. There is no I, I don't think the Russians did very much. I really don't think they did very much. Yes, are they a threat to us? Yes. But <clears throat> you also try to find common ground 
and there's nothing wrong in Trump or General Mike Flynn or anybody before, you know, with him trying to have a dialogue with the Russians, because we do have common interests. Sometimes the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Let's talk about Mike Flynn for a moment, because there was another thing that happened where they announced that they were going to delay the sentencing of Mike Flynn. I saw this in True Pundit as well. What do you think the implications of that uh, pretty substantial turn of events might be? Why would Mueller want to It's one of two things, sentence? neither of which is good. <laughs> okay. Good for who? Uh, for the president. Okay. Okay. I mean, we know what Mueller has in mind. Mueller wants to indict uh, the president. There's an article in Politico today which says that that's what his prosecutors and he want to do. But the question is, can he legally do it? But the fact that they put it off may mean that General Mike Flynn hasn't given them what they wanted to basically chop the president's head off. Right. Okay. Or it may mean that they have what they wanted, but they're going to hold sentencing over his head until he testifies in any criminal trial. Okay, so it could be one of both, neither of which is good. What about the possibility, or is it a possibility, that Mueller realizes, let's say this memo proves that their surveillance was illegal, they made up a story to get the FISA court to give them a warrant to do the surveillance, and that led to the questioning of Flynn, is it not? I forget what the legal term is, but that fruit of the poison tree. Yeah. Is it possible the whole thing could just go away and Flynn? No, not, not in the real world. It's no. not, not going to go away. But this is why, you know, you mentioned the petition on our website. Yes. I do urge people to go there to support us. FreedomWatchUSA.org. FreedomWatchUSA.org. We have co cases to try to legally remove Mueller. We've got more things on the horizon. I'm seeking all of his documentation with the media to show the illegal grand jury leaks. Mm -hmm. So go there and sign that petition and support us. We already have nearly 15,000 names on that because <clears throat> you know, we need the support and the financial resources to fight Mueller. I mean, it's a very big task. So I hope people will go there, freedomwatchusa.org. And I just showed a little the advertisement. Website. So, okay, so no chance that Flynn, that, that this memo will cause a situation where Flynn could no. walk. So is, is no. Michael Flynn going to face jail time, or what do we... What well, do we see, because they indicted Flynn on lying to the FBI, it wasn't for what he was allegedly doing with the Russians that they intercepted. Why is that, you think? They had to have something on him. And what he did with the Russians wasn't actually illegal? Well, you know, I don't know because I haven't gotten into it, okay? I think... General Flynn is a patriot, but you know perhaps he didn't register in time, and perhaps it was not good judgment to have these relationships with certain foreign countries while he was working for Trump. But I don't believe that he did anything illegal. I really don't. I just think that he kind of should have thought it through a little better. But that's not illegal, and basically they're holding him out to dry, just like they're holding Manafort out to dry. They want to squeeze him. They want to get these people to say things that aren't true, and that may be what has happened with. General Flynn is that he have said, look, I can't say things that are untrue. I'm not going to play your game. And that may be why they're not willing to go through with the sentencing right now. They want to try to turn him and pervert what he has to say to use against Trump and others. And, mm. and I believe that General Flynn's a man of integrity. I don't think he'll, he'll cave. I agree with that. And I suspect that he probably lied to the FBI because he knew that they were crooked and he didn't want to... They are crooked, you know, and, and I don't advocate this. We talked about this a little bit last time, but, you know, look at Batman, look at Spider-Man, <laughs> okay, from comics. I know Stan Lee. Wow. Is that, you know, there's a certain school of thought in this country, and this is where we're headed, that you have to violate the law to enforce the law. And, you know, <clears throat> I don't advocate that. But what I'm saying is there are people out there that feel that way right now, is that you have to take matters into your own hands because these government agencies are violating the law. Our founding fathers, okay, violated every law of King George III because they were unjust laws. And there are such a thing as unjust laws. There's a law, there's a law of God and then there's the law made up by man. Might I be so bold as to possibly modify the statement that maybe it's not uh, breaking the laws, but challenging the laws in the ways that you are with the lawsuits that you bring through Freedom Watch 
And even in what we're doing right now, yeah. by having this type of uh, independent broadcast that's not owned by a corporation or controlled by advertisers, right. we're really able to talk freely and for as much time as we want about all these topics that might be suppressed. Certainly the local press in Las Vegas was, I think, hostile towards the Bundys when Cliven had his press conference outside the police station there and uh, they, they, they weren't there outside the jail covering it in the way that some of the independent media was, uh, that John Lamb was and all the, all no, the they, supporters. They come in, they try to be your friends, they try to smile and they have an agenda. And I saw that when I first started Judicial Watch. I was a little naive, a lot naive at that time. People would come into my office. The first person that wrote a profile about me, a guy named Paul Bluestein, B-L-U-S-T-E-I-N, and Tori something, I forget his sidekick's, sidekick's female name. Uh, they tried to prevent, pretend they were my friend, and uh, I would joke with them, and then they would turn it you know, against you. For instance, deposing John Wong, who was the alleged Chinese spy that Clinton put at the Commerce Department, which did breach our national security in all likelihood. Uh, I was joking that I had deposed him, and I called this chair the John Wong chair. So, you know, they tried to turn everything, and you have to be very careful with the media. I usually don't give any interviews unless I have somebody present to listen because they'll also misquote you and they'll, they'll twist things, hmm. unless I really know the journalist. That's why I like going live, allowing you to say yeah. whatever you'd like to say. And uh, I think we are having a little transmission problem, but as I said, we're recording here, so we'll upload that afterwards. You know. Um, I am still trying to Could find... Could be the NSA, uh, Jason. I think it might just be uh, poor network quality. I was watching a video about 5G yesterday, and I think a lot of people are right. worried it's going to rot our brains and pollute us, but it's definitely going to be faster. Well, I've gone through three cell phones in a year. My computer's doing weird things. Oh, really? Mr. Montgomery, uh, they tried to break into his computer, the intelligence agencies and the FBI, and... We have a lawsuit pending on that, and it never ends, and, and they know no bounds. They can even turn on your smart TV and, and watch you and listen to you in your home. That's yeah. the capability that they have. Well, we've certainly seen that. Cheryl Atkinson has spoken to me about that, and obviously Edward Snowden's revelations uh, have shown us, and of course, uh, Mr. Montgomery yeah. from the NSA would be very familiar with all the different things he can do. It really is quite scary. Hopefully we can roll some of this stuff back. Well, and see, this is what, if I can also maybe scratch my own back or toot my own horn, this is why there's only one Larry Klayman, okay, because people are scared. Yeah. People believe that they could be destroyed, okay, by this so-called government. And frankly, I have a belief in God. I told you last time that he came to me, he talked to me, he said, Larry, you're working for me, okay. So whatever happens, and I may not always do the right thing, and I may not exactly know what he wants me to do. I, I seek that guidance every right. day. But I'm not afraid. And I don't know if anybody else in this country is a lawyer who will stick his neck out to the max. And that's why I want to be special counsel. And that's why I'm going after Mueller. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, you also become radioactive. Yeah. And if you ever wanted to work for a big law firm, if you're a lawyer or a conventional thing, that's not going to happen. So you right. have to be your own man. And, um, and, and that's why people just simply don't take strong action anymore. And that's what I love about Trump. You know, the guy's willing to go the max. If he, if he uses words every now and then that are a bit over the top, the heck with it. You know, I think most of the words he uses are justified, frankly. Uh, and, and this is the first time since I started Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch that I've been supportive of of a president, hmm. frankly. I mean, I loved Reagan, but I didn't have Judicial Watch then. But uh, you I certainly didn't like George W. Bush. I thought the guy was a complete failure. He was a total idiot. But you don't feel that Ronald Reagan's presidency was controlled by H.W. Bush and the neocons and all these guys? To some extent, uh, they all are. I mean, these people that are in and around. You look at Oliver North, who did stuff that I don't believe uh, Reagan knew about. Reagan may have Iran said, contract. look, get rid of the Contras and you figure out how to do it. But he didn't, I don't believe Reagan ever had his hands on with what was going on with Iran and, and the other places. So there were people that did things that weren't right, that were part of this Republican establishment. But um, Trump's his own man. He's the first president we've had who's his own man. I agree with that. I mean, with Reagan, it just always felt to me like he was a puppet 
that looked good in a suit and people mm -hmm. recognized from being an actor. But I mean, wasn't it like three months in they tried to kill him? When, when was yeah, the they did. But, but he, but Reagan had core values. He had he had good values and he had good instincts, and uh, he certainly could persuade the American people. But it was a different time. Okay, it yeah. was much more civil then. Uh, and today, it's every man for himself. Why do you feel it was more civil then? Just the progression, the degradation of ethics and morality in our country. And uh, he could have a conversation with Tip O'Neill without Tip O'Neill trashing him for things that he had done. You know, in, in those days, let's give an example. They didn't think Reagan could be elected because he was divorced once. Mm. Okay. Wow. Okay. I mean, uh, Clinton brought all that to to an end. Yeah. I mean, you can virtually do anything you want and be president <laughs> of the United States today. It's true. Yeah. In fact, the worse you do, the better it is because it's all fake news, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still hoping that we'll hear something about the memo before we end this broadcast. But uh, given the, given the. Uh, Okay, so here it says, White House currently transmitting no redaction FISA memo and Trump letter back to the House. Oh, FISA memo leak. Let's see what True Pundit has to say about this, Larry. So McCabe admits FBI used bogus Steele dossier paid for by Hillary to obtain FISA warrant to spy on Trump. Now, this just came out moments ago, and... Uh, I mean, you know, this is, this is clearly stuff they don't want coming out. Looks like there's a lot of information that we're going to want to go through to try to sort of uh, sort this all out here. What do you think the significance of uh, Andrew McCabe, as it's called, lawyering up would be? Is McCabe looking at possible jail time? You asked me that question, time? I never answered it. Well, that's Washington, lawyer up. Have three or four lawyers to do the job of one. and. Uh, you know, then do your legal defense fund or whatever you're going to do. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he should lawyer up. And do you think he'll be put in jail? I don't think anybody will be put in jail, frankly. I really don't. And, and that's my cynicism here, and that's why I need to be special counsel. So go to freedomwatchusa.org. Look, I've been doing this for, for 30 years, okay? and it's a giant kabuki theater. Okay? Hillary Clinton is not quaking in her boots right now. She knows. Uh, through her lawyer, David Kendall, who knows how to grease everything, and others, that she'll never be held accountable by these clowns looking down here. You need somebody that's willing to go the max. You need somebody who's willing to use a grand jury. You need somebody who's willing to indict Hillary Clinton in Alabama as opposed to the District of Columbia for what she did, or in Little Rock or whatever. Little Rock seems to be getting some traction. Uh, yeah, but you know, you indict somebody here, it's a joke, the jury you're going to get. And uh, because they're all very pro-Democrat, uh, they're pro-Clinton. And in fact, Robert Ray, the second independent, third independent counsel during the Clinton years after Starr and Fisk before that, mm -hmm. his report said he had evidence that Hillary Clinton had lied to the grand jury. But he said, I'm not going to indict her because an African-American Democrat, predominantly Democrat, a jury in this, in this city will not convict her. And he just let her walk off. You know, I don't believe that. I think African Americans, frankly, have a lot more integrity than he was willing to give them credit for. And the irony here is I, I do a radio show sometimes with Armstrong Williams. It's predominantly African American on Sirius. Mm -hmm. It's Urban View. People can listen to it. In the beginning, I was pelted with tomatoes. Okay, but after all these uh, times that I've been on, they're starting to understand what I'm saying. Uh -huh. And they understand, and there's a lot of very bright people on, on that, sh you know, that call in, is that they understand that they were sold out by Obama. Yeah. They understand that this illegal immigration thing is taking jobs away from the African American community. They're very smart. And they're not so pristine. And I'll tell you something about African Americans, too, all this Me Too stuff with, you know, women accusing everybody of sexual abuse. I mean, yeah, there's some really bad examples of it, you know, Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacek, etc. But my own view is probably about 80 to 90 percent of this is because these women exploited their sexuality, didn't get what they wanted, and 40 years later they're mad that their life is not exactly what they expected it to be, and they want publicity. Okay, African Americans understand that better than than uh, white people. They they're not so 
pie in the sky, you know, no pun intended, black or white, with their view of life. Right. And uh, they have they're, they're more down to earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They understand the abuse of government too better. Well, I think that's true for sure. I think that uh, black people in America have understood uh, certain things. Like I think uh, back in the early 90s when Rodney King's beating was captured on video, I think that was a very surprising moment for white people in America, whereas black people sort of felt yeah. like, hey, finally this is coming Jason, to light. You know, most black people don't walk around with a chip on their shoulder. Um, most black people do not call everybody racist at the slightest provocation. It's basically, you know, these clowns here on Capitol Hill that call everybody racist and everything else. And, and, you know, I think white people need to understand that. They're not our enemy. Who was our enemy was Barack Obama trying to whip up the radical black movement, the separatists. There was a picture that came out last week of him embracing Louis Farrakhan of the that. nation of, of Islam. And, uh, I mean, I always said that Obama was a black Muslim. You know, that's, that's what he is at heart. And I gave a speech on the mall where I said, get up off your knees, put the Quran down, and come out with your hands up, President Obama, figuratively speaking. I was vilified for that, but it's proven to be true. You know, picture's worth a thousand words. The guy was a black Muslim. He, he doesn't like white people. He doesn't like Jews. He doesn't like Christians. And we saw that for eight years. But, and that's infecting the body politic today. What he started, in my view, was a crime against this country, really. He tore it apart. Hmm. How did you feel about how the Congressional Black Caucus reacted during Trump's State of the Union when he spoke about the reduction in unemployment among blacks? That's what I'm talking about. Listen to Urban View. Most black people, you know, are happy that they're getting a better lifestyle. I was over at the Apple store the other day. I have to buy another computer, computer because They've screwed up my, uh, my computer as well, the intelligence uh. agencies and the FBI. <laughs> and there was a black person sitting across from me, you know, kind of, he wasn't a rich guy or whatever. He says, you know, I like Trump. I said, why do you like Trump? He says, because he's giving us more opportunity. You know? And then he told me I got a friend down there who just got out of prison and he's back doing what he used to do, you know, and, you know, we got to clean our own house up here. So it's not a, a fight between black and white. It's a fight between the people up there on Capitol Hill and the, uh, the incredibly dishonest hosts on CNN and MSNBC that are trying to create this civil war between not just the races, but the sexes and uh, the religions. Yeah, everybody. And, and they're just trying to tear the country apart so then they think they can seize control. And who's behind that mostly? George Soros, a self-hating Jew. And you know I'm of Jewish origin. I'm Messianic and Christian as well. But a self-hating Jew who actually working for the Nazis collaborated with kid. the Nazis, taking property away from Jews, going to the to the death camps, and he's delighted about it. In that interview on 60 Minutes, he this has is no. This is the savior of the Democratic Party and the left. This he is he epitomizes what the Democratic Party and the left have become. Isn't he wanted under criminal charges in Macedonia or Russia or something like that? Undoubtedly, and also you know. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's son made a remark about him, and you know, it shows you how bizarre things are today. I mean, the guy is a self-hating Jew, so Netanyahu's son makes a remark, and then that's called anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because Soros is Cause, cause he's Jewish. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, Larry, I think what we should do is maybe end this conversation now. We'll try to find another yeah. spot with a better connection. I'll make sure that this uploads. We'll do a little bit of research and see if the memo has, in fact, been released, and maybe we can come back. We can a pick it up later. later. I want to say, uh, Jason, you're going to be on my radio show with me. I have a radio show on Radio America. Wonderful. Special prosecutor with Larry Klayman, so you can understand the motif. Mm -hmm. And that's on at 3 p.m. on Sundays in many areas. You can also get on a podcast at RadioAmerica.com mm -hmm. and FreedomWatchUSA.org and uh, we can pick it up uh, on that show and thereafter we'll see what, what happened. Can people hear the radio broadcast on FreedomWatch.org? They can. FreedomWatchUSA.org. FreedomWatchUSA.org. And yeah. it's also important that people remember they can support the effort there financially and they can sign the petition uh, so that hopefully 
we can remove Robert Mueller and get you, Larry, appointed as special counsel and move this whole thing forward. So, okay, we'll pick it up again uh, later today from Washington, D.C. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Jason.